I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Hello. Sam Healy. <laughs> What's up? Okay. <laughs> so a week and a half from today. Right. Uh, well, actually, no, because Gen Con starts on Thursday. So two weeks from today, uh -huh. the biggest board, days. biggest tabletop convention in the world starts, and that is Gen Con 2017, which has sold out. We don't, we don't know what those numbers are, but they're big. Um, so Gen Con is a huge convention in America, and one of the biggest parts of Gen Con is the Exhibitor Hall, which mm -hmm. is like bigger than pretty much any other convention in America, just their Exhibit Hall. Yeah, it's pretty close. Uh, sure, it's pretty close. The Exhibit Hall <laughs> at, at Gen Con is bigger than the Playing Hall at Origins. True. For sure. Really? Anyway, yeah, yeah. Wow. Anyway, there's a lot of uh, people coming in, and so there's a lot of games being released, and that's what this video is. We're going to talk about 10 games uh, to check out at Gen Con based on our knowledge and or guesswork. <laughs> yeah, I was guesswork, say. yeah, right. Yeah, I was, well, I, was I mean, to some degree, we have to go by guesswork. There's, we even, because this is two weeks before the convention, there may even be some more games that are there that we don't know about. Sure. They get announced later on, yeah. Now, fortunately, Board Game Geek's new convention and preview tool which we use uh, allows us to cut out the ones very easily that are only there for demo yep and yet very even useful even some of the games that we talk about today there's a good chance they're not going to be there because sometimes games don't show up yep. or games that people thought wouldn't be there will be there right. etc cetera, etc cetera. yeah now uh, we didn't have like any really specific criteria other than that they had to be in print my, some of the games on my list I've played already, these are games that mm -hmm. if I was going to Gen Con and I was going to go hunt down games to buy, these are the 10, I am going to Gen Con, but if I was hunting down games to buy, these are the 10 games I would make sure I, I went and hunted down. You're going to Gen Con? sold out. How are you going? Oh man, can you take me with you? Can we go? No! <laughs> I, I did the same thing. Uh, many of the games on the list are, not many maybe, some of the games on the list are games I have played either a, a full you know finished version of or a prototype what have you and um, but the jumping off point for me was also if I was going there sight on scene hadn't heard or really you know knew uh, how these games played these are games that would have my interest correct yeah that's um, more more than half of my list are games that I've already played before really? but again um, these are the ones that, that uh, I would encourage anyone to at least go check out. Yep. Not necessarily buy because you got to make that own decision. That's a decision you have to make. But uh, at least go and try to get a demo of them. Try to uh, at least stop by the booth and check it out as it's being played by somebody else. Something like that. Go give these a look. All right. Um, I also did not... This is just me. I did not put expansions on my list so that my list would not be dominated with expansions because I had seven expansions I'm interested in. I have expansions on my honorable mentions. I don't have any expansions on here. Not because oh, okay. I was avoiding so them you didn't necessarily. Put any on quick go. Champions of Midgard expansions. Absolutely. Those are the two honorable mentions that I have. Yeah. Cities of Splendor. <laughs> I know you don't like Splendor, but I'm looking for that expansion. Cry Havoc expansion. Sheriff yeah. of Nottingham expansion, yes. the Nation's Dice Game expansion, yes. and the Orleans uh, Trade and Intrigue expansion. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, and then one thing I noticed in going over the games, there's no game I feel, maybe I'm wrong, that this is the game people will be stampeding for. Like last year there was Seafall, and the year before that there was... I'm trying to think what other games that were there that people... There's always seems like one or two games that people are like, I must get this game. I don't know that there is any game that there this year. There's some games that look really neat. Yeah, yeah. But like, for example, one of the biggest uh, releases is the, um, the Mars game from Portal. Uh, First Martians. First Martians. But that's already... The pre-orders are already out. Mm -hmm. So maybe people will rush for it, but it's not like the game isn't available to some degree. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Nothing jumped out at me with those qualifications. So, yeah, maybe you're right. Like a huge release. This right. is Now, we don't know because Fantasy Flight always waits until <laughs> after right. we do our list, I think. <laughs> They're like, the dice star put the list up. All right, now let's tell people what's going to be at Gen Con. Yeah. Um, so over the next two weeks, they're going to be announcing the stuff that they have. So there will likely be some things, and maybe one of those will be hot. Maybe the Legends of the Five Rings will be there. Mm -hmm. right. And if so, that will probably be a hot game, etc. That being said, let's start the list. Number 10. 
All right, my number 10 is a game from Emperor S4 Games from Taiwan, I believe is where they are based. And uh, last year they really hit it out of the park with Hanami Koji. And within <laughs> that same universe, they have another one coming out called Shadows in Kyoto. It's another two player game and it's a uh, hand management, grid movement. Uh, so I really enjoyed Hanami Koji. I think that I have at least a very <coughs> base interest. I don't know anything about it except for how it looks. And again, it's the same beautiful artwork. Um, and it is a two player game, which Hanami Koji was. Integrates, uh, BGG says it integrates with Hanami Koji. I don't know exactly what that would specifically mean. You can fit them both in the same box. <laughs> Maybe so. Um, I've heard that it, it, it's not something that you add to. It's not an expansion for Hanami Koji. It's, it's a completely different game. So I don't know what the whole integrates with. Maybe means. there's a card for... Uh, sometimes they, they so kind of cheat on these. I, I, I Maybe it's the so. same system with different powers. It could be. Oh, that'd be interesting. It could be because it is hand management. It is grid movement. It is a two-player game. So that's possible. Hopefully, hopefully I'll be equally bad at this one. <laughs> well, I really enjoyed Hanami Koji. So when I saw that they were coming out with uh, actually three new games, but this one really piqued my interest. So uh, that is Shadows in Kyoto uh, from Emperor S4 Games. All right. My number 10. My number 10. I'll go before you if that's okay. <laughs> My number 10 is a game that Z crossed me. <laughs> that's right. That's a uh, hint. So you said that's one. That's a hint towards uh, my number. Like you guys do on the podcast. Oh, I feel uh, like I'm on the podcast. My number 10 is actually a game that the few people who've played it have told me that was not that big of a deal, including Z, I think. But I don't care. I'm really pumped about it anyway. And that's Custom Heroes. This is from AEG. It's a trick-taking game, mm -hmm. and it's based okay. on the card crafting system yes. that was uh, Mystic Veil. And I love that system, and I love trick-taking games. So I'm pretty pumped about putting them together. You said that it was just okay. It's okay. I don't believe him. It's got to be better than Z says. I saw. I, they, <laughs> I, w I think I was the one that did the interview for us at Gamma when they showed mm -hmm. us the interview at Gamma, and it looked intriguing. The artwork is phenomenal, mm -hmm. but again. I haven't actually played the game, so I don't... I don't know. I'm just pumped. I, I like know. the card crafting idea. I like trick taking. I think it's a good combo. That's one I'm interested in. Okay. My number 10 is Crossfire from uh, Plat Hat Games. And this one I don't know a whole lot about. I know that some people out there have already played demos of this. They seem to have enjoyed it. It's a game with uh, some role selection in it. It's a game that lists a very short play time, which has me intrigued as well. I know, I know. <laughs> it's, um, it's a social deduction game. It's a social deduction game. It's got great artwork. It's from designer Emerson Matsuushi, who I think is a great designer. So I'm interested. I don't know a whole lot about it, but all those things are making me check off a lot of boxes, which means I'm going to swing by and check it out. That is my number 10, Crossfire. Number 9. My number nine is a game called Museum Heist. Uh, this one here, I'm just kind of pumped about this game because of the theme. And that's really it. It's from um, Fox Mind Games. Uh, they, uh, I like the idea one person, oh no, everyone's trying to go into a museum and rob stuff and get out. And that sort of thing always appeals to me, to go in and get out. I'm, this one's based on theme alone. Oh, you don't know what this is based on. No, what do you mean? It's an it's an old Alex Randolph game. Oh, is it? Well, that's even better then, yeah, right? Alex Randolph is a good pretty job. abstract game. So, the theme here is going to be thin. Oh, you're ruining it for me! Yeah. My number nine is actually. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Is it really based on an Alex Randolph game, huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, they might have added the theme back in. Well, sure. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll stop. <laughs> He's being mean to my it'll be, list. It'll be good. It'll be good. You'll love it. It's really museum-y and heisty. My number nine is a game that started with theme when they made it the first time, which is now. And this is a game, actually, you know, this game, I just saw it pop it's up. so rude. I just saw it. It, I, it looks like it just came, became available. So it's a game called Deadline. Um, and what interested me about this one is that it's based, uh, it's not based, it's, it's the same style as those uh, Sherlock Holmes consulting detective 
style games. Okay. But with a, it seems more mechanically robust than those games. It's not just mm. like, I'm going to go over here and read a paragraph, and now what do we do? I don't know. Who's the publisher? Read over here, and I don't remember off the top of my head right now. Sounds interesting. Um, oh, well, I saw the box cover for this one. Yeah, it's it like a, a noir, it. like, you know, right. detective yeah, novel look. Yeah, okay, now I got it. Yeah, it's cool. Um, and I saw an overview of it. It sounds really interesting. A little more, mm. like, rich story, but mechanically interesting also. I don't know. I don't know. That's what I got so far. It really looks cool. I'm going to check it out. So that's Deadline, my number nine. Hopefully there's less reading in it than that consulting I think, detective. Uh, yeah, I think oh, that's the deal. Yeah, goodness. I think it's supposed to be... That was that was literally like sitting at a table with four other people reading a book. I didn't book know club. you played consulting. Detective. Yeah, I played it at I played it at BGG. No, not BGG. Um, um Based the gathering. Oh, gathering with uh, Scott Nicholson and a couple other guys. You get to cool. read a lot. Scott Nicholson, he he loathed that game. Loathed it. He hated it. Hmm. So Interesting. hopefully, I, I guess better. I'll review the new version that just came <laughs> yeah. in. All right. <laughs> All so. right, Sam, I think you're up. All right, my number nine is a game that we took a look at at uh, Origins. Um, I don't. Uh, I think we may have got got them on on video. One of the things that we did on the live stream, um, but it is Big Trouble in Little China, the board game. Hmm. Um, this is a movie. It almost has a cult following oh, very at this much. point. And uh, it's I like I, an actual I really cult, do I mean. love it. No, it's not an actual, cult. <laughs> but <clears throat> I really do enjoy the, the the movie. It was a great. It's a great fun movie, and uh, I was really excited when uh, Legendary came out with their Big Trouble in Little right. China, and then the beautiful artwork. The oh, yeah, the the really bad artwork yeah. actually really just kind of threw it off the end of a cliff, the edge of a cliff for me. So. I'm I'm really hoping we we he had um, resin copies of the miniatures that were going to be there that were in the box. Um, the board looks really good. Yeah, he um, did show it off. I, I looked at it yeah. at Origins on the screen. I stream. mean, it looks like they have done a very good job of putting this game together. I just hope it's mechanically sound. Right, and that's my it concern too. It looks really good. It, I mean, it, it, right. they knocked the presentation out of the park. I just don't know anything about the mechanics yet. Right, right. So I'm really looking forward to giving it a try. Hopefully I can demo it uh, in some way, shape, or form there. Um, but uh, definitely go give them a look because what I've seen so far is amazing. Number eight. My number eight is a game called Professor Evil and the Citadel of Time that is being mm. brought out by, uh, I Passport think it's Passport too. who's putting it out here. I forget I, I, who the original publisher is. Uh, Fun Forge, maybe? I forget. I don't know. I don't think it's Fun Forge. I don't remember. I don't remember either. But anyway, Passport Game Studios has it. And it's a co op game and has a really vibrant look to it. It's a game in which you are um, trying to stop a madman from jumping all over the time continuum and stealing artifacts or something crazy like that. It looks cool. It's captivating. It sounds captivating. It's got, a, like I said, a really neat theme and look to it and co-op which always makes me interested it's from a couple of uh, great designers as well who've made some games i really enjoy like uh, elysium it's from those those designers right, matthew um uh, dunstan. dunstan is yeah. one of the designers so yeah i'm excited for that one professor evil and the citadel of time check that one out cool it's also a great name it is yeah all right my number eight is a game that uh by the way my the first four of my list are games i have not yet played yeah, I, I, I I'll I've, mention. I think when I've I'll, mentioned that so far. Yeah, I'll mention when I when I've played something. Yeah, uh, my number eight is a game called Unicornus Knights, and uh, this is an interesting looking game. It's a uh, from what I understand, it's a cooperative game where uh, a princess has decided that she is going to ride out and conquer all of the evil bad guys. Okay, cool. and she is in no way capable of doing this. Well, she's pretty powerful, so, but she's not powerful enough. So the players are actual. Uh, warriors who are supposed to have been the people gone out okay. and they are now being given charge by the king to protect the princess warrior as okay. she fights we have to make sure that she lives and and defeating the bad guys is all that's that's all I really know about it I don't know much about mechanisms or anything else like well, that I played it you have yeah all right um, she like basically is just moving. A, shut up. She's and, like, and he's going to Gen Con. She's oh. moving across the board, essentially towards yeah. this bad guy. Right. There's bad guys all over the board too. So you yeah. are trying to either kill them and get them out of the way, 
yeah. or like Just manipulate her. her to move a different <laughs> way. Maybe you should go this way. Yeah. And then some of the bad guys like sit in their castles, and as long as you don't go to land, you're fine. They're like, yeah, whatever. Others are like actively coming after yeah, you. Okay. So interesting. Uh, that's that's the feeling that I had from everything that I read so far. So that's that's good. And she can kill like a bad guy yeah. easily. Like she's super powerful, but it also wounds her dramatically. Okay. So. You gotta like know the best time to let her just do her thing because she's like righteously angry. <laughs> yeah. like, it's she, like a Joan of Arc type character. Yeah, right? yeah, really. But she's powerful, but not enough. Yes, I understand. That's cool. that's well, cool. that's that's that really kind of bolsters my interest in it because that's exactly what I thought it was going to be like. And the artwork is great. It's that anime style, um, but it's not too anime-ish. It's just kind of on the. It's in the. I don't know. In between. I think there's different levels of anime and some of the deeper levels I'm not very interested in but this is kind of more cartoony uh, what I guess you would see on like a TV show or something to that effect so okay. that's what I'm looking forward to Unicornus Knight my number 8 my number 8 is a game I did not expect to put on my list but I saw a demo of it at Origins and I was intrigued this is from IDW Games and I believe it's pronounced Saikatsu um, it is a three-player abstract so game. S e i k a t. Oh, I know what you're talking about now. Yeah, yeah. with like collecting flowers or something. Yeah, it's but very abstract looking. It's very abstract. Well, it is when they explain to me. But the thing about it is, it's like for it's best with three players, mm -hmm. and you are collecting stuff, essentially based on how you can see the board. You are trying to get things in your direction. Yeah. So I like that concept. You know, I'm looking at things from my perspective. There's three different perspectives of this flower garden. And I also okay. like the fact that it's three players because most abstract games are two. Mm -hmm. um, when they go beyond two, they're usually not that good right. for whatever reason. So this one sounded good from the description of it and the short demo they showed me. So I'm pretty pumped about it. Also, I like the pieces. They it look looks nice. pretty. Yeah. Saikatsu. Number seven. Speaking of games that where you are looking at the board matters, my number seven is a game called Photosynthesis in which, uh, this is coming out from Blue Orange Games, uh, in which, uh, depending where the sun is around the board, shining down on the trees, you uh, will have your trees generate light for you, uh, you know, do photosynthesis or not, and you utilize that to plant more trees, all of that stuff. We've actually played this. Yeah. Did we play this live, guys? I forget. No. No, right? Pretty sure no, we did not. I don't think so either. Now. But anyway, we've played this... Um, very very late stage prototype it was it was basically done but uh i really enjoyed the game it's an attractive game it's mechanically very sound it's uh, got a nice uh sort of ramp up of effects and you do get in each other's way a little bit even without meaning to because you could plant something behind someone else's tree but once that sun swings around you are now putting their tree in shade which means it's un you know an inactive this round very clever very different game, really, for how simple it is. They've come up with some mechanisms here that are captivating and, and really cool game. So uh, that's my number seven photosynthesis. I suspect it'll show up in someone else's list shortly. My number seven is... Um, no, not that. My number seven is from Restoration Games. Now, Restoration has, 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 Games has three new games coming out. Yes. Fantastic-looking <laughs> stuff. Highly recommend all three of them, and my favorite of the three is probably Indulgence, but the one I recommend people get actually is Downforce. Okay. Because Downforce mm. is just so much fun. It's a <laughs> racing game, um, the bidding game. I mean, it almost, in some ways, almost feels a little bit like a horse racing betting game. Yeah. There's a lot yeah, of those right. out there. This one's with cars, though. It's just simple to play. It's, uh, Easily one of my most played games of the year so far, I think. And when I people come over, this is like my new gateway game of choice. Huh. Like, oh yeah, you want to play it? There's six of us. We can do this. It's easy to jump into. Even if you don't, if you have to have at least one car, if your car is not doing so well, which is quite possible, you can still bet on the winner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Great, and it's fast too. Mm -hmm. So downforce. That's good. That's good choice. All right, my number uh, seven. He, he praised me. Yeah, my number seven you. has already been mentioned by someone, and this is the last of my list that I have not yet played, but it is on Z's list. Professor, Professor Evil. Evil on the Citadel of Time. Oh, he sounds cool. We're coming out. So, no. I just, I just thought it was, it was like Professor Evil. Yeah. <laughs> in the Citadel. I just thought it was a really neat-looking game, and I know probably less about it than you do. But I, I know did, it's got a very white box. I did, yeah. And well, interestingly enough, you said it kind of deadpan, but that's one of the first things that drew me to it yeah, because yeah. it was stark. It's a cool it box. was very, um, just it just pops. 
and, and you want to go check it out. Um, I, I, I saw it at Origins. I was not able to demo it. I wasn't able to hang around while other people demoed it. Mm -hmm. I just saw it, and it looks good. I like the uh, cooperative nature of it. It's always a neat thing. So uh, that's my number seven, Professor Evil, the Citadel of Time. Number six. My number six. And I said at the beginning about expansions, this is this is kind of an expansion, but it's also a base game, so it's Ooh. different. That's Dungeons & Dragons Tomb of Annihilation from WizKids. Oh. I love this system. So this is the uh, Castle Ravenloft. It's oh, this is like the fifth? Expansion. It's a st expansion. Because I don't think we should call them st expansion. That sounds it's a, weird. It's a standalone, but it is an expansion. Stan Spang? What? Stop. Both of you. Please, stop. Yeah, yeah, stop. It's st expansion. It's <laughs> not, nah, on, yours is worse. But anyway... Yeah. Um, the, uh, this is a cooperative game set in the Dungeons & Dragons universe. The Tomb of Annihilation, from what I understand, is one of their new modules, I think. Okay. And what I like about this is they're doing the two-tiered selling thing, though, that they did with Assault of the Giants, oh. where there's the regular version, and then there's the version with all painted. the miniatures are painted. Cool. So oh, okay. that's the version I want, because I don't want to paint my stuff. <laughs> and it's compatible with all the other things. This is the second version of this that WizKids has done. Mm -hmm. um, of of this game, I, I like them. They're cooperative. They use twenty sided die. You move through. You find monsters. You fight the monsters. You find a big monster. You kill them. Mm -hmm. That's it. It's okay. really really simple. Um, it's the sixth time this has been done. Oh, I thought it was the fifth, sixth time. Huh? It might be the sixth. It's either. This, Who cares? It doesn't this matter. This expansion at this point. or this like this kind of a like module. This kind of game. This I game, thought they did okay. three originally, and then I thought I don't know. Five or six. Who knows? There's a lot of them. But either way, I'm pretty pumped about it. Cool. So that is uh, Dungeon Dragon Tomb of Annihilation, which also is just a really cool name, right? Yes. Welcome to the Tomb of Annihilation. Mummies. I'm out. <laughs> just that belt. name. All right. Hi, like... is this the Tomb of Annihilation? Party of two, please. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> you got to get reservations years in advance. All right, my number six is a game that was nominated, I believe, for the Spiel... This year is this year, um, and it is called in English, "The Quest for El Dorado." That's right. It's gonna be there from Ravensburger. And this is uh, a game that kind of I didn't know anything about it until we it was announced that it was in the running. Um, but uh, it's a really interesting race game. It reminds me of Mississippi Queen, but like light years better. But it's that same idea of you're your, your starting at a, a starting line, and it feels like a race, and it really is. You're trying to weed your way through, kind of, uh, no pun intended, uh, jungles and deserts and forests and, and mountains. and Well, you have to go around the mountains, but you're trying to get to the city of El Dorado. And you're trying to be the first one to get there. Uh, and it's a really neat uh, deck building hand management game really uh -huh. that fleshes itself out in this in this race it's really light it has a really cool mechanic where uh, if you you have this row that everybody can purchase from and then once one of those stacks is gone the next person who wants to build can go up to this other group of cards that haven't been able to be to been breached yet and purchase one of them. And when they do that, that comes and replaces so that everybody else now has the opportunity to do that. Right. I really yeah. liked that that m mechanism of switching out the cards that are available for everyone. Mm -hmm. Really enjoyed it at all, uh, a lot. And uh, the Quest for El Dorado is definitely a game that you should give it a work. It, it was it was nominated for a reason, and uh, I, I wholeheartedly agree with it. I, I kind of almost wish that it had won, but uh, I thought it could have. But go check it out the uh, English version uh, we got a copy of it is pretty much the exact same as the German one they just changed the cards yeah yeah, Text. yeah. that's it cool all right my number uh, six is uh, has been mentioned already by mr. vassal well it has to be awkward silence. Da downforce then it is downforce indeed I was cool. gonna say I keep um, <laughs> he, he dislikes all that you made fun of all my other choices <laughs> and I was quiet through that one all right like a little mouse <laughs> I, I, I very much enjoy also what Restoration Games is doing. I think I agree with them, actually, that I like the trick-taking game the best. But for very similar reasons, I feel like Downforce is the one that, uh, unless you know you adore trick-taking games, then, you know, you should probably go check this one out. Downforce is it's a clean design, attractive, it pops on the table. You'll be able to get this one played, is what I'm, is what I'm saying. I think if you grab a copy of this, take it back home, you're going to have gamer friends wanting to play. 
family and non-gamer friends wanting to play. This one's got that, it's got those qualities that I think is going to translate from one group to another very seamlessly. So, Downforce, really, really fantastic racing game. That's my number six. Cool. Number five. All right, my number five is a smash-up of two IPs. Is it a smash-up? No. Um, uh. It is Flick 'em Up, Dead of Winter. That's not a real thing. Yes, is that is. a real thing? It's absolutely no, a real a thing. And you know it's a real thing because what? it's sitting on our desk in there. You're being... <laughs> this is the fakest See, everybody, of all. Everybody gets on me for being, uh, like... Uh, uh, nonsensically mean? argumentative. He's, what? No, what? He's like trolltastic more often than you can imagine. Yeah, but I do it with a smile on my face. <laughs> okay, so I can be really mean and just smile and it's okay? Yeah, you'll seem I less mean. I think that's how that works. That's how that works? Okay. <laughs> Go All right. Ahead. Well, I'll, I'll give it a whirl. Anyway, uh, Flick em Up Dead of Winter is uh, really interesting. It takes an IP that I wasn't I mean, I enjoyed it, but I wasn't too interested in that's fuck em up. And then a, an IP that I really have enjoyed, and that's Dead of Winter, and threw them together. And at first, that was the reaction we had. That's not real. That's some Seems kind like of... Seems like a joke. Yeah, yeah when some, they told me, I was like, yeah, weird no. joke. But it really works. And it has some really neat... The zombie tower mechanism that they've done in dispersing the zombies during a rush is great. I mean, and it really... Because... I don't know. You just there's places on top of the tower for each of the zombies so that it alters the trajectory that they that they come out of that tower with, and uh, you really have to be careful. You can't just willy nilly go at it. It's not this hack and slash type of feeling to it uh, that a lot of zombies kind of carry with with it, but. Uh, this one really works. You have to be careful with how you flick. Uh, sometimes, like with the bat, you can use that sucker as willy-nilly as you oh, want. I love that bat. And it's it's really cool. The shotgun, you're actually shooting four discs out of it. And it's at the just same time? Real, yeah, yes. at the same time. You have to actually make sure that they're not lined up perfectly. Right, you have to like, make them go back <laughs> and, and forth. And then you just so like, wham! <laughs> it's really, really fun. Had the a great better. time playing it. Um, even though we had some... Uh, weird questions on our our initial play at uh, Dice Tower Con. Those have been ironed out, and I really enjoy the game now. Huh. So if you have any chance at all, you need to go go by and check this one out. Flick them up, Dead of Winter. You stole my thunder is what it is. My number five, Sam also mentioned, uh, well, you mentioned my, my six, Sam mentioned my five, the quest for El Dorado. You guys Very keep cool. mentioning them one, well, one number think, ahead of me. I think we're going to have a lot of crossover on this list yeah, just we because we... Well, the next four are games no one's heard of, so I wanted to avoid that. So uh, I actually made up one of them. I'll let you figure out which one. <laughs> All right. Now, the quest for El Dorado, as Sam said, is, is a, it's an interesting game that combines a few very simple ideas into something that flows very well. It pops, it's bright, it's got very simple deck building, very simple racing. And you combine those things, and it gives you a game that is easily uh, brought to the table, I guess yes. is a good way to put it, you know. Um, so, yeah, I very much enjoy this one. Check it out if you enjoy um, these ideas. And, and if you like one, you might like the other, and I'm talking about Downforce and Quest for El Dorado here. So, you know, if you find yourself attracted sure, to the one... Sure, you two racing games in a row. That is true, yeah. Then go, you know, go swing by the other one's booth and, and check them out as well. So there you go. That's my five, The Quest for El Dorado. My number five I'm interested in based solely on theme, and that is Hot Shots. Uh, this yeah. is a game in which you are cooperatively Art, trying to put Art out a... No. <laughs> that, that's, that's later. That way, if they do that, that would be hilarious. <laughs> that would be copyright infringement. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but... <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Hot Shots is a, it's not about anything <laughs> what you might think there. It's about putting out a fire. Uh, a fire. It's a cooperative game. It does look cool. Forest fire. Does, and I yeah. love that theme. I don't know if the, the mechanics are going to be good or not, but the last co the, their cooperative game they're most well known for, sort of Castle Fireside Panic. Games, right? Yeah. right? Yes. They're, which That's is ironic. funny. That's Fireside, ironic. right? That's ironic. Hot Shots. Put out the fire. If this game drives their company out of business, that would be super mm. ironic. I'd that you went too far, bro. You think so? I'm not. Yeah. I'm not saying it's gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. It's not good. Wow. All right. no, I'm just that, saying that, that was, was a. That was one of those times where you were mean with a smile. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't mean. Sam's taking I, notes. I, I, oh, I see how this that's is how done. This works. Okay. I'm just saying that if this happened, okay. Anyway. It would be unfortunate. <laughs> <I> yes. <don't... laughs> <laughs> Clearly, we don't want anyone to go out of business. Absolutely not. Especially not on an ironically titled game. 
because then people won't forget about so it. So Hot Shots is a... I'm really this pumped short, about this it, This is on my short list for sure. It's not on the list, but I, it would have been maybe my 12 or 13. Yeah, it's cooperative, so I figured... I actually thought it was on your list. Anyway, Hot Shots. Number four. All right, my number four is a game that I have played a lot, actually, um, comparatively so at least, and uh, that is the new dungeon call from Ares Games, Sword and Sorcery. Mm. Uh, now, this has a lot going on for it. It is kind of a fantasy remake, redo of Galaxy Defenders, which I can't remember if I've played or not. You, I think, said I have played it. I said he played it. And I, I don't, might have lied, I don't I recall like playing it, but... I may have and just don't remember it. Uh, I'm but this is only your number four. I thought you like love this game. I do love it. I do love it. But there are three others that I love a little bit more. All right. So so much love to go around. That is right. That is correct. Sword and sorcery is a really neat mechanism. I like uh, the shadow tiles where. Um, you know that there are bad guys here, um, but you don't know exactly what they are. You see them lurking in the shadows. You know they're there, but you don't know what they are until uh, they get flipped over and, and that type of stuff. And it's really neat. And some of them might be just an innocent bystander that uh, just runs away when the, when the fight starts. You can't kill them. So uh, you don't want to. Well, I guess... You possibly could want to kill it because it does, and that leads. Thanks for the segue. You got that it. leads you into. Got it. I've played this, this game many times. This, no, you haven't. That leads us into the other aspect that I thought was really cool is where you you choose the alignment of your party. Um, you can be uh, good. good, bad, no. or neutral. Good. And uh, it's really interesting. Evil, it feels bad. more like an RPG than it does a board game, but it is a board game, mm. and it has that time frame on it. It doesn't take hours and hours and hours and hours and hours to play like an RPG could, it just depending takes upon hours and just hours? a couple How of hours. How long is it? Two? A couple okay. of hours, yeah. Uh, per scenario. Depending on, you know, your so first game is always going to go lower. going to say per person there for a second. <laughs> no. No. Almost got me. No. Your learning game is always going to be longer, but once you get all the all the rules nailed down, it, it's it's about a couple hours per scenario, I would imagine. Okay. Cool. But uh, I really enjoy it. You need to go check it out over at Ares Sword and Sorcery, my number four. My number four is our first three-way crossover. Ooh. And again, based on a name, I'm sure, and that's Professor Evil and the Citadel Souls of Time. Of time. Yes. I love time travel in books and comic books and movies and everything, except board games cannot do it. <laughs> they can't. Yeah. So maybe this is the one that does it. Although I don't know if time travel's in the game. I know. I the, think it's very lightly featured as as set dressing, you know. I know the main bad guy's doing it, and you're trying yeah, to stop. But yeah, co-op, yeah. like the name. Yeah. Components look great. Artwork looks good. Also the name. <laughs> <laughs> no, how many games are named boring names? Yeah, that's true. It's no, good it's to true. see a game named fun. So anyway, Professor Evil and the Citadel of Time for everything they said. All right, my number four is uh, a Cthulhu game, which usually I do tend to enjoy Cthulhu-themed uh, games, as long as they don't look like, you know, pasted on cash grabs kind of <clears> games. <throat> Pandemic but, Cthulhu. Like Pandemic Cthulhu, which is one of the worst good games out there. My number four is Fate of the Elder Gods. Uh, uh, we got a peek at this at Origins. And then after we did a little interview, then I got to see some of the components up close. They are fantastic looking components. The board looks great. Miniatures look great. It sounds like you are... I mean, it, it doesn't seem very complicated, which uh, Cthulhu games, like in the ilk of Arkham Horror, Eldritch Horror, tend to sometimes be a little overwrought for me, for my tastes. So this one seems a little more streamlined. Uh, I believe Richard Launius is one of the co-designers for this one. And that man is like, you know, all, all things Cthulhu, so he knows his, he knows he his really stuff. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm really psyched about it. It looks fantastic. Uh, from what I've seen, a turn overview seems pretty straightforward. So I'm captivated, uh, captivated by that one. That is my number four, Fate of the Elder Gods. Number three. All right, my number three has already been mentioned by Z. Yay. But this one I love. Uh, it's an amazing game, and that is Photosynthesis, yeah. yeah. Photosynthesis is, if it had come out two months earlier, I would have said front runner for Spiel des Jahres. Yeah, yeah. I think it should be the front runner for the Spiel des Jahres next year, right now. Although, that would give Blue Hunch two games in a row, right? They just won oh, with King Domino. Boy, so yeah. that, that probably won't happen. But Photosynthesis is amazing. It looks great. 
Mm -hmm. It's simple to play, just a few actions, but you can mess other people over. Not really on purpose. You can a little bit, you but mostly to help bit. yourself out. Again, it's very similar to Ticket to Ride in that way. In Ticket to Ride, you're not normally going out of your way to block other people, unless they're your kids. I'm um, doing it to you. Um, uh, but, this is true. But you, I mean, you could in photosynthesis, but you, you're really doing it to make your own things better. Mm -hmm. And it plays quickly. But if it you can do both well. at the same time, that is definitely what you want to do. Well, right. And, and again, you can do the same thing here. This is a great spot to build my tree. It might get me some points. It also blocks each tree from the sun. Yes. Right. But you're never blocked out completely. Because no matter where you are, the sun comes around and you should get light. Unless somebody builds trees around. Well, that would be really bad. <laughs> <laughs> this game is phenomenal. I'm really surprised at it, the lack of buzz around this game. This game should be one of the most played games at conventions, I think. And I just think there's not enough copies of it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not I, out We yet. only had one copy at Dice Tower Con. Dice Tower. I'm telling you, once this game's for sale, you're going to hear people playing it. Yeah. It is the next Splendor type game, I think. Hmm. Photosynthesis. Wow. Ooh. I think it's going to sell a lot. I'm calling it now. Okay. That was my yeah, number 11, actually. Really? Yeah. Unearth is a uh, push your luck dice game, which, again, I, I caught a glimpse of it at Origins, and it looks fantastic. Bright colors, very unique art style to everything. And I, this is one of the ones I actually know the least about over the whole list here. Uh, I, there's just not a lot of information out there. But. It looks really spectacular. It sounds like it's my style of game with the, uh, you know, you got a bunch of six-sided dice, but then one, maybe eight or ten-sided and one four-sided. You are pushing your luck. You are rolling and placing dice on cards, it looks like. Pretty straightforward stuff. But it's the, the look and the uh, push-your-luck me mechanisms that, that I think are going to make it something I'll enjoy. I'm, I'm hoping. I don't really know again. But, yeah, this one's pretty, uh, very much on my radar. Unearth is my number three. And I forget who the publisher is right now, but it's, uh, they have that little... It's right here. Yeah. It's right here. Maybe. <laughs> oh. All right, my number three uh, is a game that is being put out by Pandasaurus, and it is called Wasteland Express Delivery Service. It's a long name. And it is in a oh, post-apocalyptic world Professor where Evil. you are quite simply picking up stuff from one place and delivering it to another place so that you can earn money. And, and then you take that money, or scrap is what it is actually called, and you uh, use that to purchase modifications for your vehicle, whether it be this huge school bus that has a whole bunch of sheet metal placed all over it, or if it's, it's this um, a 16 wheeler that is made to look like a battle wagon from like uh, uh, look, the, the the movie that you like. Fury Road. Yeah, Fury Road. Or, Witness me. Or it's a it's a Pontiac Trans Am that has a trailer behind it, and it it just, that turns into a robot. No, it's not. It doesn't turn into a robot. Um, my only thing about this game that really kind of holds it back just a tad is that it, it's it's. It's, it's a longer game. It's not one of these things that he's going to sit down and play, even though it's one of his favorite themes of all time. And uh, I think I can probably still get him to play it. Maybe a yeah. two-player game. Two-player game would probably be pretty fast. Yeah, it might be. But it's a really fun game where you're basically trying to uh, accomplish... The first person to accomplish three of the, the three main goals, the first is the winner. And so... But you have to do a whole lot of things to go... And some of the times, you know, one of the... Sometimes it's it's take this nuclear bomb from, from this faction of bad guys to another Ooh, faction of bad guys. Can you blow it up? Or it's digging for treasure and delivering it to a certain place. Um, and so there's a lot of really cool thematic things about it. The miniatures are really good. Uh, the one thing that, that really kind of solidifies it as something that I think people should go check out, it, and, and it's weird to say this, but it's the box insert. <laughs> it's not the that weird. It's amazing. Box insert is absolutely amazing. I think it's the same company, Zen Benz, that did uh, one of the things for uh, Star Wars Rebellion. And they just, I mean, it's, it's amazing. And it's, it, it's, it's in the retail box. Uh, it's not something that you have to buy aftermarket. So I really enjoy this game a lot. You need to go check this out. Wasteland Express Delivery Service. Do it. Number two. My number two is a game I've been able to play already as well. And uh, <clears throat> Tom might not put it on his list because he'll find it to be a conflict of interest or whatever, but I'm putting it on my list. Ooh. Viral 
is my number two. Uh, in this game, you are all, all the players are viruses uh, attacking a human host and wreaking havoc. Uh, and while that sounds kind of weird, it's a very tongue-in-cheek game with very cartoony artwork, and it is really a superb game. The game is uh, an area control game with an with some confrontation. I have solid amounts of confrontation, I would say. <laughs> yeah. You know. But you are controlling <laughs> in, in everybody's face. <laughs> There's no friendliness there. Yeah, no. yeah. But it's it's really really great. Turns are quick. It's interesting. You have to manage your hand of cards, which are the things that allow you to to make moves on the board. You have to control different organs. Um, the the levity that the the game brings to the table is really interesting and captivating. I love it. I love it. I think it's it's really a very well designed game with um, where all the things work towards making it a solid package as well, including the artwork, which, as I said, I think is some of the best artwork I've seen this year in board gaming. So, um, yeah, that's it. My number two, viral, really really fun stuff. All right, my number two is our second three way crossover, and that is. Photo. Photosynthesis from Blue Orange Games. This is definitely one that you guys need to go try and check out because it is that cool looking. It is that fresh of a system, I think. Uh, it has a really interesting theme on top yeah. of all of it. Um, not only does it... Um, not only does it look great, but it also plays great as well. They really did a good job in, in making sure that all of the mechanisms were thematically connected uh, mm -hmm. in that in this game, and I really do think that that's great. I love it when games do that, and this is one of the ones that you know normally I probably wouldn't be up on this theme so much you because can't kill it, anything. No, it's not that you can you actually do cut your trees down, so you are killing trees at the end of the game. But what does happen? I don't think you're cutting them. I think they just like go up into the sky. You are the definitely You don't know how harvesting. trees work, my man. You are definitely harvesting the trees. For points. No, but I think you are the trees. I don't think you're like. I think the trees like just die and they become points for you. No, I'm actually very serious. I don't think you are like lumberjacks in this game. No, you're not lumberjacks. No, but I mean the trees are. I think they harvesting. just die. They go you're become tree spirits. <laughs> At any rate. You do need to go try this because it is a very cool game and it is a very neat looking game. And I think once you see it, you're going to be hooked. Once you play it, hook, line, and sinker. Uh, all right, my number two. Viral. Oh, sure. okay. okay. Sure. Look, I know it's Dice Tower Essential because I think it's a good no, game. I, thought, I figured you might. Oh, you're a humble guy. You know, I figured you would leave it off. But I didn't do anything with this game other than choose it for the best sure, sure. no, I so I'm not, not, I'm not like... faulting you for picking it I just I figured if you weren't gonna put it on there I was gonna put I love the game I really do it's in it's one of my favorite games so far this year mm -hmm. I'm really excited about the game I, I think the theme is fresh again that's why it and photosynthesis were so high on my list right. there are two themes I'm tired of seeing training man training but I'm also tired of seeing zombies Cthulhu and <laughs> generic guys in a dungeon Right. This, these are so two like themes that are different. Of Sam's list. <laughs> well, half of all our lists, really. No, not my list, sir. Excuse <laughs> me. You just had Cthulhu on your list again. <laughs> <laughs> but photosynthesis oh. is also like a, a, a game that I can be like, hey, family, want to try this out? Same thing with viral. It's like you explain it. People are like, oh, that's interesting. I could do that. You know. Mm -hmm. And it's a kind of a grim theme, but it's so light and silly. It is. It really and doesn't. like I always tell yeah. people, the patient, I think he survives at the end of the thing. He's fine. I think so. Absolutely not. <laughs> He's okay. There's right. too many bad things. Two. Anything that doesn't kill you. Too many bad guys. Makes you too stronger? Too many bad things going on in that moment. I don't know. What if you're... Okay, never mind. Let's move on. And finally, number one. Yeah. All right, let's hold and see who goes first here. I don't are you serious? serious? Come on, man. Man, what a gangster you are. I didn't feel like three, two, one... Do, 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 do. Yeah! Rigged! <laughs> Come on, his phone comes out of his pocket. He wins. Please. Right, I'm going to go first, then Sam, and then Z, because I don't know what Z's is. Yes, uh, mine is on Z's list already. Oh. But I'm way looking forward to this game because it's my favorite current designer. Oh, yes. And that is Crossfire. Crossfire, I'm super pumped about, even if I think for crying out loud they should have chosen almost any other name. Crossfire is a cool name, but this is like the 
third game, there's already crossfire, the shooting marbles. Then there was Shadowrun crossfire, and another, they're coming out with you're another right. version of that. You're from, right, you're right. Um, so, but this is a game in which it's a social deduction game. There's an assassin trying to kill the president, and one guy's a sniper trying to take out the assassin. Players are looking at each other's cards, almost as a good cop, bad cop feel to it. Really, really entertaining, and that was just the prototype I played like two years or so ago. So I'm assuming that it's even better now. Yeah. Again, Emerson has not made a game that I've disliked yet. Plaid Hat makes very few games I dislike. That combo is really good. I like the universe it's in. Really pumped about this one. <laughs> so Crossfire, my number one. Yeah. All right. What do you think my, his number one is, Tom? You were having a hard time one. figuring it out. Well, you said it's one you've already played. Oh, yeah. Played this uh, a lot. It, it can't be the Star Wars Rebellion expansion, even though that no. might be there. And if it was, that you'd pick that pretty high. No. It was an ex it's an expansion. It is an expansion. Oh, no. But, okay. Give, give me a clue. Give me a clue. Yeah, me a a clue. clue? Yeah. Um, it's a card game. What? Mind blown! <laughs> it's a car. Has it been mentioned? It has not. Wow. Are uh, you not Sam Healy? <laughs> <laughs> What's the company? Uh, WizKids. Is it The Expanse? No. no. I kind of already played it. I haven't played The Expanse. The Shadow of the Camelot game? Oh, Tournament that trick taking yeah, game yeah, that yeah, you yeah, were yeah, like in yeah. love that with. That is correct. Tournament, Tournament at Camelot. That's your number one? If you, listen, if you like trick taking games, I do. You need to go play this game. I won't. And you need to go buy this game. I can't. Yes, you can. But this is a game Stop talking, punch. That, is, <laughs> that takes trick taking simple, easy trick-taking mechanisms and provides a simple player power twist to it uh -huh. that doesn't overshadow the, the rest of the trick-taking aspect yes. of the game. Um, he's what? only played a three-player version of it, if I'm, if I'm correct. I think so. Yeah. yeah. It was me, you, and Justin. I liked it. But I liked uh, it. it was... I gotta, I gotta I'll tell you what I really thought when Sam's not here. Yeah, he, he's, he's already place. told me. He's, he thinks it goes too long. Like... According to him, most trick-taking games do. Yeah, but no, they do, really. This is an actual... Th this game, actually, in my opinion, the more players you have, the faster it goes. Because, oh, I did enjoy it. I did enjoy it very much. It's a good be game. Yeah, because the whole thing is you're taking uh, wounds um, at the end of every tournament round, after every uh, all of the cards have been played out. And you're, you're taking wounds. So the more wounds you take, the faster your life is going to go down, and so forth and so on. When one person dies... Uh, or is knocked out of the tournament, uh, then the game is over, and whoever has the most health is is the person that's left. Right. So it, it's actually really neat. There's godsend cards that help you kind of get yourself back up. If you get beat up real early, there's godsend cards that can help you get back into the game a little bit and kind of get you to feel like you're not totally out. Uh -huh. um, really, really a fun game. I, I really enjoy uh, trick-taking games that are like this. It's not just about playing the cards, it's also about using my power in such a way that I can manipulate how the cards are played. Really great. If you like drinking games, you need to go check this game out. Do it. All right. All right, my number one is... Has it been mentioned? It has not been mentioned. It's a game that actually is not getting a whole lot of buzz either, unfortunately. Uh, so that was going to be my that. Has it been heard about? Not much. It's a game coming out from Renegade Game Studios. I got to play a uh, prototype of it, I want to say, a two, two Origins ago. Okay. And I really enjoyed it. It's uh, got a very neat theme. It's a worker placement kind of game with then card, li like sort of tableau building. It's a game called Ex Libris. Uh, in which you are running a like you are organizing the books on a on a like fantasy world's shelf, I guess, or something. Was this in your top ten anticipated games of the year? Probably. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, anyway, I got to play. It's really cool. I like that the um, the arrangement system, the mechanism for arranging the cards in front of you, is very cool. You, you have to figure out which card you want to draft so that it fits what you're doing in front of you. Besides that. What's going on in the center of the board is pretty cool because the places you can send your workers, the places you can activate, change from round to round. And not in a way as predictable as other games where the pool grows. You know, like an Agricola game where, like, where you can send people, it grows, and this one it changes. And I found that to be really interesting because you can never, you know, you can't always count on what's going to be out there and you have to make 
the best with what's available. It's just really, I don't know what it is. The turns are quick. It's very uh, engaging. Uh, it's puzzly in a, in a way, but doesn't bog down. Really, really, uh, ever since I played the, the demo of it, the prototype of it, I've been looking forward to, to getting seeing this game come out. And finally, it will come out at Gen Con. So, very high on my list. That is Ex Libris from Renegade Game Studios. Really cool. All right, cool. Well, folks, in the comments below, tell us the games that you're looking forward to. Again, these lists could be fluctuating really big. Yeah. There could be a game announced before this video is even published, and we're like, oh, what? Yeah, there yeah, could sure. be games that haven't been announced that are just really exciting and going to be there, probably. So keep an eye out for that. Thank you to Board Game Geek for having the tools to put this together. Mm -hmm. And thank you for these publishers. We're going to see you guys at Gen Con. We're going to talk more about Gen Con next week. We'll do some other videos, and we hope to see you guys there. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. See ya. Sam Healy. See you on the flip side. Thank you.